So just a brief introduction. Uh, my name is Karthik and I lead uh, the Transport OPA project in ONF. And this project is under what we call OTCC, Open Transport Configuration and Control project within ONF. And this has been the standard side of ONF before the merger with ONE Lab. So we've been around since 2012 uh, under various names. The group name has changed like it used to be something else before. But we have been working since 2012 in ONF and Lyndon there is the chair of the group. <laughs> and we've been standardizing these APIs within ONF with the intention of so that we get all the vendors interoperate, right? That's the main goal is to interoperate and not really worry about how you, what controller you use and how you implement it. So this was before the ONE lab merger, right? So our use case was there was ONOS controller, there was open daylight controllers and there was proprietary EMS, NMS. And we needed all of these things to interoperate on the NBI like the previous talk was about. But we were going about standardizing it just by having many vendors join in and we developed these APIs over the period of time, right? So basically what is Transport API really contained? Um, it's not just one, one single monolith module. It's like multiple modules, we use the word services. And the first one is a topology service, which is kind of the very basic. And this is what that this the talk is going to focus only on this topology service today, right? And the concepts behind it. Um, then we have this connectivity services through which you can request connectivity and so on. Um, then we support like operations like you know OAM like monitoring for performance, collecting data, and setting up maps, MIPS, and so on. Uh, then the path computation service where you could request, the API to request path computations from this, from a system. Um, uh, virtual networks, and this was like right from day one, this was our original focus, but um, kind of like over like last few years, the interest kind of waned on this and now it suddenly picked up. So we really didn't haven't worked on the virtual network too much. I mean, it, this is what was the very first cut. If you ever go into transport API and you see virtual network, that's because Last four or five years, there was not much interest. So it's picking up, we'll start working on it again. And then we have the equipment inventory, which is kind of the physical equipment inventory. So as you'll see, when I start, about, start talking about topology, I'm not talking about device, right? And we have this concept that where topology is logical. And so we are separately a service that, that allows you to inventory equipments, fibers, ports, and so on. And finally, the notification service to sort of stream your notifications using push mechanisms. Um, one key thing to note, all of these are just APIs. They're just interfaces. And the way we worked is we didn't assume any implementations, right? We don't tell how, so how you implement the APIs. We worked on just defining the APIs, considering the implementation as a black box. And we were able to do that just by considering the applications that we really need for transport applications. So we, we were work, working top down. In, typically in the standards, people work bottom up, like they see what you have and then you define the APIs. In this project, right from day one, we started putting down the use cases, applications, and then we said, okay, what do you really need from an SDN controller to support this kind of applications? And then we developed the APIs for that. So it's an interface and we just focus only on the interfaces. Um, now, just to give an idea like where it was deployed and how it's been deployed, like this, this one slide is not so much about um, the interop, various interop demos we have done with these APIs, um, but how it has been applied. Right, and but this ONF we have worked with, since ONF we really don't do interoperability demonstrations. We have worked closely with OIF over the many years, over various three, like, you know, three interop, interoperations. And like, this is like a list of all the vendors and service carriers who are involved in these various interops at various times. Um, the way we, way this APIs were worked is like, we assumed like there were domains, right? like vendor islands, it could be administrative, it could be because of layer boundaries, whatever the boundaries may be. Like there are different providers, operators have different re reasons to sort of classify their network into domains. And it was a controller, so it could be ONOS controller, it could be ODL, it could be like, you know, proprietary NMS, EMSs, whatever it might be. And in the, it was typically tra transport API, even though it was just an interface was applied at the north bound of these controllers, right? But the key part was that it was not just applied at the north bound of a controller, but there were also setups where a controller on the top, which we call like a multi-layer controller, multi, I mean, hierarchical controller, or that is more used, it consumes transport API from its south bound, does whatever it needs to do, and then exposes it again on the north bound, right? And 
also the API was consumed by what is called, what people call service orchestrators in like the bigger picture. So the transport API was applied both on the northbound of controllers and southbound. Uh, but just I want to clarify, when, when I say southbound of controllers, it's those controllers which are working like an abstract controller at higher level. It's not, it, I wouldn't apply it at least <laughs> to the devices, but this, this is kind of the use case where, we've, where it has been demonstrated, applied and being used in various operator networks. Um, similarly, like we also, the MEF has adopted this APIs at, within their LSO architecture. If you are familiar with MEF and LSO, uh, MEF is an SDO that really works at a layer above what ONF does. They are more interested in standardizing services and products, right? How the BSS, OSS interoperate. Um, it's kind of like a few layers above. So in their architecture, this is not my slide, um, they have this concept of business applications and the service orchestration, and then infrastructure control and management. That's where the SDN control comes in. And then of course element control, right? This is kind of the higher level architecture. And they're primarily really use between like when they want to interoperate between one service provider and other service provider. That's, that's their domain. And within MEF, um, trans, the TAPI has been applied at what they call the Presto interface between service orchestrator and infrastructure control management. And this is a logical figure, right? It doesn't say how many, like whether you do hierarchical control, SDN control, or a single SDN control distributed. That's, that's, not, the, that's not the purpose of the figure. It's more of a logical um, breakdown. So it's, it's so this is sort of to give an idea of where transport API has been applied. Right? This is the introduction to TAPI. The rest of the talk is going to focus on just the topology manager and the concepts behind the topology. So we don't implement the topology manager within ONF. The ODTN project has adopted TAPI as the NBI to be exposed up. So tomorrow in ODTN session, you will hear more about, uh, like a little bit more advanced, I would say, um, concepts related to TAPI related to optical, as well as you'll see like there are other stuff within ODTN. So the hope, the reason I brought this talk here is to sort of like make a case that we should be looking, if who knows if we are going to break up into microservices and have a topology manager, um, this would be a good candidate to consider to expose as the NBA of the topology manager, right? So I'm going to use this example going forward to describe the topologies and how the concepts around this topology. So this is a physical network, uh, very simplified sim physical network where you have like four nodes, right? And these are kind of the edge nodes, right? So this is a term like once you go into SDOs, so you have the provider edge uh, and then you have the provider internal, right? And the ones in the green and red are your customer boxes, customer edges. So. And the interface between the customer and the provider is what is called UNI, user network interface. And there is also network to network interface, external and so on. I'm not showing the complicated scenarios where you have multiple operators trying to interoperate with each other for this concept. Um, and to make it a little bit complex, I assume that on the UNIs it's all ethernet interfaces while internal is optical, like OTN interface. So because I want to just show how we really can take this very simple abstractions to rep represent multiple layers, right? And you will hear more of this tomorrow in ODTN uh, sessions too. Now for the simple use case that we have here, um, like I said, TAPI assumes that the entire controller is a black box, right? And we, in the ONF architecture, this before the merger, we had this architecture working group which defined this ONF architecture where it says the primary function of a controller is orchestration of resources and providing some virtualizations, right? Um, so in the example, physical example that we had, when you see from a controller, you really don't know it's a device or it's an, um, you know, just an agent or an emulator or whatever it is. The reason is you are just communicating with it over your APIs, right? Or whatever interface, whether it's NetCon, Piang, or if something else, uh, GNMI, or it's whatever it might be, it doesn't really mean the devices are physical. It could be anything, right? So in our architecture, we just call it resource groups. So the four nodes are basically exposing some resources, right? And the controller, once it receives the resources, it, it, it actually groups them into what we logically say server context, right? So this is the context for the server. It gets information, then the controller really puts together all this information that it gets from its southbound to create some view, internal view of what the network looks like, right? And now to serve its clients using TAPI, 
it's not going to expose what it really has always, right? It may expose some abstraction of what it has, some partial thing which we call the tabby context, right? So that's the client context which is exposed to the client. And it need not be exactly what is what the controller sees at this server side, right? And assuming that like I said there are two clients, we assume two clients. Let's say that the green client, the red client was a very simple client. We'll see the rest of the use case. While the green is a little bit a more sophisticated client. So it not only consumes from this controller. Remember the first, uh, the second slide where I had like hierarchy of controllers. So it may not only consume the ex resources exposed via TAPI from this controller, but it may be actually even connecting, it may have other resource groups from maybe other controllers or maybe devices, right? And finally, there is kind of the admin context is no different than your other client context. And the admin context might be such that, that this, in this context, whatever is exposed is what is exactly the internal view of the controller, right? So the, the key takeaway here is with TAPI, all the client server interaction happens within what we call a context. And the context is supposed to be exclusive. So the client assumes that whatever is exposed to it, it has exclusive control of those resources. So it's the job of the controller, if it has multiple clients, to really do this resource conflicts and make sure like everything's allocated properly and then push it down, right? This is the basic premise that we do in TAPI that the client doesn't have to worry about resources being shared. It thinks it has exclusive control of the resources. So going from there, with the physical example that we had, now I'm going to introduce some concepts in TAPI, what we have. The first one is the service interface point. Remember in the physical network, like there was the interface between different, like the user, the client, the client devices and the actual provider devices. Those interface points we represented by what we call service interface points. Now the service interface points are abstract and logical. It's, it, it doesn't have to be one-to-one -one with anything physical, right? It's a logical representation of the interface. Um, the second thing is we represent in this first example, I'm representing the nodes that we had, four nodes, I mean four devices with nodes. In TAPI, what we call those as nodes. Now, one thing to remember in TAPI, the node is not always represent physical device. It's just a forwarding domain, right? And then you have this internal connections. We, we can actually put like, you know, and I'll show some other examples where you abstract, you're able to abstract even that. But this is what we call node edge point. So you have a node and you have node edge points around it. Some of the node edge points are facing external to the interfaces. So they map, there is an, they map to what we call service interface points, while some of them are more internal, so there are no service interface points associated with it. Uh, other thing is the mapping between the service interface point and node edge point is a mapping, right? It's not a hardwired thing. So it's logical. So it could be that at one point, uh, this service interface point maps to this node edge point, but it, later on it could move, this, this mapping could move to this, right? And, but the customer never sees it, and I'll explain why, right? So this gives the flexibility where you separate what the customer sees from how is it done, how the topology is represented internally. So that allows some kind of seamless migration, maintenance scenarios, and so on, where you don't really need to worry about um, having ex to expose those things to the customer. So another kind of representation that you can do using TAPI is, okay, let's say Red was a simple client. So he, the client doesn't care about all the topology. It's a very simplified thing. It just wants connection A to B, right? So you, you can expose it, the entire network as a single node. So that's why I said that node doesn't always map to a physical device. It's a conceptual logical forwarding domain. So, and that client, if you remember in the first figure, we had only, it had only three interface points. So it only will see three interface points Okay, I don't have this here, but anyway. So it only sees three interface points here, not six, like the admin context does, right? Because it's only the client has, is connected only at three points. The red client is connected to the other three points. So it has three service interface points and three node edge points, but it has a single node view. You can also over TAPI do something what we call edge node abstraction. So you have the edge nodes, right? Instead of actually representing the whole uh, network, you only represent the edge nodes and you provide the interfaces that this client can see, the green client. And now this is where this complete abstraction, you'll see that there's a link between the node G1 and G3, well, and it's sort of the node in between the P node is completely abstracted out, right? So this is another abstraction that's possible via TAPI. So 
assuming that there's, and these are not the only three, like there are so many other abstractions that you can do because a node does not map to a physical device, a node edge point does not map to a physical port, and a service interface point does not always map to the edge node, the node edge point, right? It's all flexible mapping. We have a separate set of APIs to do the physical topology, and I won't go to go into that today. So now assuming there's simple topology that the red client C is a single node abstraction, right? So the topology is represented by this dotted line, and you have the node which is a single by this dark, I mean yellow oval. Now if the client wants to connect between two service interface points that was exposed, it wants to request a connectivity to the server, I mean to the provider or the SDN controller, it creates what is called, we call the connectivity service. The connectivity service is always, it always references the service interface points, nothing in your, not a node edge point or node. Right? So, and then the controller computes the path and it provisions everything and send, returns back the connection, which is now what the square green circle, uh, uh, square um, uh, light green entity is what we call connection endpoint. So, the connection represents the actual provision flow between two node edge points, right? This node, node edge point, connection endpoint is basically where the connection terminates, right? And this is what is now written as a response to the connectivity service. So everything in the oval and inside this is what we call the topology constructs, right? And connectivity service is one type of service that we expose. There are other services like path computation service, virtual network and so on, but all of them use the same topological constructs. Uh, service interface point, node edge point, node, and uh, connection links and connection endpoints. And that, those are the only objects that we have, yeah. I, just a quick question. Um, what is the relation between the service endpoint and service interface for the black circles and blue circles? Uh, so when you request a connectivity service, uh, it's basically the service endpoint is the one that associates that connectivity service with end service interface point, right? So in this simple example, we just have a point-to-point -point connectivity service. So it's only associating two, it's, it's requesting between only two endpoints, but in TAPI, which I'm not going to go through today, you could appoint a multi-point. So now you need to know which, which point, endpoint of a service is associated with service interface point. So there are other attributes like the role. So service endpoint has a role, whether it's a root, leaf, or other symmetric and so on. So there are a little bit more things which we can ignore, but conceptually, this is the point that associates the connectivity service with that service interface point, service interface point is mapped to node edge point, and the node edge point really supports basically the connection endpoint, which could be, which could take up the entire capacity of the node edge point, or could be channelized, right? It, there could be like multiple connections over the same thing, partition. So that's the basic, basic, basic abstraction in TAPI. Yeah, good. All right, so we find this suit correctly, the, the point is basically, so, your service interface point would be a UNI right. interface. Yeah. Your service endpoint would be if you have, say, a multi-point VPN that you want to span multiple mm -hmm. access ports, that yeah. would be your service endpoint. Right. Your connection endpoint could be uh, an MPLS LSP. Right. Okay. Absolutely correct. Yeah. Yeah. The connection would be the MPLS LSP, and the connection endpoints are the ones that terminate. Now. Let's go to a little bit more complicated topology, green topology, where we said that guy has not a single node view, but he's got a three node view of the topology, right? Now, if he requests a connectivity service, right, between these endpoints, he gets not only the big connection, but he gets like what we call like the connection which is contained by nodes. So in some ways, like he not only knows like there is a connection with this characteristics, but he also knows the route of the connection through the topology, okay? And this is a very simple example which I'll build on on top. So the connection has concept of route, and route is nothing but the topology of the connection, I mean the, the, the path the connection takes through your topology. And this is a simple point to point, but if you have like protected connections and you have so on, you'll be able to see all your routes, and you may have a working route, and you may be backups, and you'll be able to see all those just by saying, okay, I need this connectivity service, this is how the controller does it, right? 
So, and let's now go to the admin view and make it a little bit more complicated. Um, let's say the controller now, it, remember at the beginning I said the edge, the edge nodes process ethernet, but the internals is all optical. So here you, the four nodes that was in the real physical network, four devices in the physical network is now represented as seven nodes. And the reason being that now we have actually separated your forwarding domain based on the layer characteristics. The nodes on the top represent your ethernet forwarding, right? While the nodes at the bottom represent your optical forwarding capabilities. And you link your ethernet forwarding and it really depends on what your device can do uh, with, with the optical forwarding through what we call transition link. The transition link basically connects a node edge point at a client layer to the node edge point in a, some server layer, some different layers. And now we are talking layer network. So the, in this example, the layer networks are ethernet and optical but it could be like, you know, Ethernet and MPLS, it could be anything like, oh, and in this case, when I say optical, I mean L1, uh, ODU network, but we have like ODU and photonic network, you have the radio access network. So we have the models for all of these, but it's not necessary in TAPI to do it, but this kind of abstraction is what typically we expect the TAPI server, I mean the controller to keep internally, right? Because now they have cleared, they may not expose this to anyone, it really depends on what the contracts are. It may be just purely for internal administration. They may expose something simple, but by doing this now, your big connectivity service which you had, to really satisfy this, right? When we started out, I said like there are no ethernet connections, there are no ethernet ports in the inside of the network. It's all optical ports. Your ethernet ports only are out in the outside. So there are, there's no ethernet links really connecting those guys, right? So first you need to set up the ethernet links and how you do that is you create connections in the optical layer. Once you create the connections in the optical layer, you have a link in the client layer that maps to the connection, that maps to each of the connections in the optical layer. So now I'm bringing another concept of TAPI topology which is the relationship between connection and a link. So connection in a server layer always results in a link in a client layer. Right? We are now talking layer networks, just remember that. We are not yet talking any partitioning or abstraction. So this is not something new. This has been in part of the ITUT models for years and years. Like whenever you do something in the server, so you create a tunnel, like if you use ITF terminology, they create a tunnel and then you have link. So it's always alternate, right? Connections, link, connections, link, going from bottom like, oops, okay. <laughs> so the physical topology, you start with the physical topology, you have the fibers at the bottom most place. Then you have some optical photonic connections like the ODTN project does and then that's, that creates links in the L1 layer. Then the L1 connections result in links in Ethernet layer. Eventually you go to IP. So that's kind of like, that's where like people then go into complete packet processing where they assume that the routers are actually connected by each other by a single link. But really it's never a single fiber or link. There's whole layers underneath. But it lets, lets you abstract. So once you have the links in the ethernet layer or the client layers, you can really then set up connectivity between that, right? So you can create connections in the nodes and now you can have the big connection that emerges out of that. So, how are we so I'll introduce one more concept that we allow in TAPI, uh, the recursive aspects of node and forwarding and topology. So. I said like there's a topology and nodes. The previous example just showed there are topologies made up of many nodes. Now if you think about it, what we in TAPI we say is the topology and a node are basically two sides of the same coin. It's just where you place the observer. If you place the observer external, he has an opaque view of the topology underneath and that's what, that's what we, we call a node. Right? He doesn't see how the ports in the node are connected internally. All he sees is like, okay, I have a node with these two edge points and this node has some characteristics whether you can connect these points, how much capacity and so on. But if the observer is placed internal, just he goes inside the node, it's a fact that almost when you go down, all the way down, you will see that there is always topology. So a node always has a topology, internal topology. It may or may not be exposed. So that's why like when you go down to a device, if you see a device as a single entity, if you really go down one level lower, it's never a single entity. There are like switches and there are connections between the switches. So in TAPI we say that the smallest node that cannot be decomposed any further is the switch matrix, right? You cannot, you could possibly decompose but there's no value decomposing a switch matrix. Your switch matrix is the smallest forwarding domain and the biggest forwarding domain is your entire network. 
and between that you choose the abstraction level you want to expose to a given client right and it's a recursive so we say that every node is can be recursively partitioned into topologies as per need some operators have done it because they have admin domains they have to have regions like say bigger and big operator has a region for europe and for south america so they have separate regions someone some some operators okay so, so and i'll stop with this slide so some operators partition it based on vendor domains and so on so this is where tappy has been used exclusively for and to represent this concepts I'll, and the same thing recursively applies for connectivity you can decompose a decompose the connection at each level the node so when you see a connection in a node and you open up the node into topology real you see the route of the connection so a route of connection is nothing but it maps recursively to this so i'm going to stop here because we are out of time but th all these slides are available publicly and they are animated and the link is if you go to let me escape out i have put in lots more slides than i knew that i would i wouldn't cover but i wanted to be able to provide is it not ah oh, okay you okay, can never mind so uh, thomas like the slides should be posted publicly yeah, the will be posted. yeah. yeah. if so, not uh, so how do we do yeah tail end slide yeah uh, the zoom i don't see the zoom ah, here i see it now should be able to zoom in very quickly now to the last slide right Yep. That's what you basically. That's that's why basically. Yep. So this is where you would go to um, wiki open networking dot org display uh, tapi or you do a search. We all our slides are posted. All our calls are public, open to everyone. Just join and like I uh, have questions, just ask us. And we have another session tomorrow on ODT and which goes into <laughs> more advanced concepts. I just wanted to present this here. Let's wait. Okay, it's warm up. Thank you yes. very much, Karthik. Yes, so yes. we definitely will uh, touch base with you with respect mm. to the Micronos topology. Right. I'm sorry? Karthik, maybe one question. Um, uh -huh. Just wondering, what do you think about the IETF work, about IETF DE and... Uh, so I have it in later on slides, but I wasn't expecting and covering it, but because it's the complexity. So we are aligning TAPI to IETF topology, not TE topology, because TE topology has got too much stuff in it. And basically, if you are, we cannot align to it, really. It's more of a mapping. We know like it, they map because many of the vendors have implemented both, including my company. So we know it map. You can map each of them. But the current, uh, the next version of TAPI would be augmenting IETF topology. So to a network topology, yes, yeah, yeah, not TE awesome. topology, Thanks. because Thank TE you. topology has too many attributes, and that's it's very hard to align the attributes. You can map them, but you have to give up one or the other. Sorry, another question. Uh, I didn't quite get. Does the uh, an implementation of the TAPI exists in the current ODTN project? Uh, ODTN project. ODTN project. Does yeah. it look only at the optical layer, or uh, if you want to do things like on simple MPLS uh, routers, it works? So well? right now they're only implemented at the optical layer. Okay. I mean they've implemented. So this TAPI, what I've shown is all. Uh, there's two parts. There's the abstract or the generic TAPI, and there are there is layer extensions. So the ODTN project has implemented the photonic layer extensions, right? So you they could have you could use the entire TAPI with any of without any of those layer extensions. So you don't get those attributes. But MPLS TP is actually being worked on by some vendors and by some Chinese carriers. What they're using TAPI, they're doing the extensions, but it's not contributed into ONF yet. Okay, interesting. But yeah.